Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel where we talk about skincare, grooming, and sometimes hair. So if that sounds like your thing, make sure you are subscribed. Also, come and follow me on Instagram where I post a lot of stuff you're not gonna see here on YouTube. So I did it. I downloaded TikTok and now I regret everything. <laughs> but I will be posting short product reviews, short skincare routines, and just nice aesthetically pleasing things over on my TikTok. So I, I guess go follow me over there, I guess. I'm not gonna be dancing. Okay, I'm not, I won't do that. <laughs> Skincare TikTok is a whole other realm on its own when it comes to the products being used, the way the products are being used, and um, some of the skincare tips over there. It's interesting to see what's happening. So I thought we would take a look at these most popular videos and see what's right and what's kind of wrong. Please bear in mind that I have no qualifications or authority to talk on skincare or how people should be doing their skincare routine. Okay, so this first video, I'm a little bit late to the party with this, but I believe this video went pretty viral. Do things go viral on TikTok? It was very popular and it still appears to be racking up the views. So just so you know, I've already watched these videos. So this isn't a reaction. It's more just me telling you what's going on here. So let's take a look at this video by The Beauty Spy. Actually a really good profile. I, I looked around his profile and um, got some really interesting products on there. So let's take a look. Want to see something gross? You know all the 10,000 pores you have in your face, those blackheads? Well, you want to know a way to get them out? It's called Pormuz, and I found it on one of my latest trips to South Korea. I travel the world looking for latest beauty innovations. This is me at the Neogen headquarters, trying out all the latest beauty innovations to bring back here to the States, doing some sightseeing and eating along the way. This mousse is made up of algae, charcoal. It actually acts as a vacuum to suck out all the dirt, debris, makeup. But look at that gross. Okay, so I'm going to stop there just because charcoal is more of a sticky ball than a vacuum. So charcoal actually has to make contact with excess dirt, oil, sunscreen, makeup, whatever you have on your face. It has to make contact with that for it to be able to be taken away. So charcoal, despite what a lot of brands kind of market their charcoal skincare as, it doesn't act as a vacuum. It's not going to magnetize or attract um, dirt, oils, whatever, to the charcoal, if that makes sense. By the way, when I say if that makes sense, it's not because I think you're all idiots, it's because I don't know if I make sense sometimes. <laughs> Stuff that's all built in my pores, coming out easily just by rubbing the mousse into my face. All you do is rinse it clean. Ugh, look at all that grossness that came out of my pores. And your skin's gonna look fresh, dewy, hydrated. His skin does look fresh and dewy and hydrated. So, um, okay, so what's going on here? As you can see, all that gunk on the towel, that wasn't blackheads, that wasn't really all the dirt and gunk coming off his skin. What's going on here is it's a fun product and I really, really want to try it, but this is a similar selling gimmick to peeling gels, gommage exfoliators. And in fact, it's the same kind of technique. It's the same thing. <laughs> so when you use peeling gels, there's an ingredient in it that's usually cellulose or something called carbamer that mixes with your oils and your dirt to form those clumps. So in this case, those black charcoal-y kind of clumps. And like in these peeling gels, it looks like dead skin, or in this case, gunk of your pores, peeling off your face basically. But this is what gently exfoliates your skin. So it's that cellulose or carbamer with all that um, gunk on it created into these balls and those balls then gently exfoliate your skin. So this exact product actually contains carbamer, sorry I've got the ingredients here, which is very similar to cellulose, again does the same thing. So no, it's not sucking anything out of your skin, scientifically charcoal doesn't do that. So whilst you may get the odd blackhead out, I wouldn't be swapping out your BHAs for this foam exfoliating foam? I don't know. Um, but yeah, it, it's still, it's like that kind of gimmicky selling tactic and it works. I know how this works and I still want this. Okay, the next video is by Kyra Gallego? Gallego? Yeah, let's take a look. She is doing her skincare at an Ulta. Doing my skincare routine at Ulta. A girl really hasn't been taking care of her skin recently, so let's go play with some good products. So I've never tested this brand, but it's a clean, cruelty-free, so I'm gonna try and attempt to wash my face in Ulta. Okay, so we stop there. First of all, um, using testers in a shop is a no-go for me in general, especially in today's climate. I don't wanna be touching these products and then touching my face. I've heard from my brother some horror stories when it comes to makeup, um, fixing sprays, all that kind of stuff. You know, what goes down in a shop. When I worked for Topman Retail, 
they for a bit did fragrances and um, skincare. It was more like body, body washes and stuff. And the things I saw people doing to those products was disgusting. People would be eating and then touching it. Kids would be like licking the bottles or picking their nose and touching the products or coughing with their mouths open. Adults coughing with their mouths open all over the stuff. So especially nowadays, the last thing anyone really wants to be doing is touching these products and putting their hands on their face. Also the product she's using here is an oil cleanser. So that needs to be applied onto dry face, massage, and then, and then emulsified with water and then rinsed away. So rather than mixing it with water and then applying it, but I do appreciate that she is um, in Ulta trying to do a skincare routine. So she hasn't got that sink. So, you know, it's fine. I like her though, she's got one of those personalities and faces where you can go for coffee with her and you know there wouldn't be any awkward silences, you know, she just seems really friendly. <laughs> now I'm gonna turn with the Alpha Grapefruit Cleansing Lotion from Mario Badescu. So lotion is just another name for toner in some brands and some cases. Lotion can also be a lightweight moisturizer in some brands in some cases. <laughs> Applied to a cotton pad, absolutely fine. I just don't like that Mario stuff. You guys know I don't wear fragrance, but fragrance is pretty much one of the key ingredients in here. Even for me, it's a little bit overbearing. And then some colorings. I honestly just don't see the benefit of these toners unless you have excessively oily skin and you don't mind drying your skin the fuck out. Because my skin is feeling dry, I'm going to use this brand Coser RX Hyaluronic Acid Essence. I love the way she says Cosrx, first of all, but that is a good essence. It's a very basic hydrating essence, obviously hyaluronic acid. Looking at the ingredients, this Dove has some more generally nice hydrating and moisturizing ingredients, glycerin, butylene glycol, and panthenol as well, which is nice and soothing. So I, I love Cosrx. That's a good choice in my opinion. Because I really want that grow because of the dry weather, I'm using the Peach and Lily Glass Refining Skin Serum. Fine, and again, a really nice, perfectly fine serum. It's again, more hyaluronic acid and niacinamide to get that glass look. Um, yeah, it's, it's hydrating and brightening. It's a nice serum. Because I really like how this brand feels, I'm gonna go in with their matcha pudding antioxidant cream. It's gonna kind of help moisturize and protect from outside environmental stressors. Vitamin C eye cream by Peter Thomas Ross. A little lip mask. A little CC cream with SPF 50 from Lancome. A dewy face mist. Again, all nice products. I personally, again, wouldn't be applying lip products, especially in a tub that you have to put your finger in and use. She might have used like um, a little foamy like sampler thing, but people, people have been putting their fingers in. You know people aren't as sanitary as we like to think we are. Again, with a the mist, there's not a need for it after a moisturizer. It's a toner essentially. So especially it doesn't need to be used over sunscreen because there might be some oils in there. You just have to be careful. After. She looks cute. I'm gonna follow her, I'm gonna find her. Okay, let's take a look at the next video. I was tagged in this so much. Like I opened the TikTok app for the first time in probably about a month and most of my notifications was being tagged, added or whatever you call it in this video. So let's take a look. I know why I was tagged in it. His skin looks amazing there, like dewy like just clear, like, like very delicate. I really like it. Okay, so, so rice water is actually potentially very good for your skin. You see it in a lot of Asian skincare and rice water for me is in a lot of my favorite products. The I'm From Rice Toner, for example, is one of my all time favorite toners. It helps brighten your skin. It's been known to help with the appearance of pores and generally again, make your skin more even. There are very little studies done on this. There aren't a lot of studies generally when it comes to skincare. Well, there is a lot, but in comparison to other stuff, there isn't a lot of studies. That doesn't mean it's not true. It just means that people aren't studying it enough to go on. It is recommended to use organic rice just because that's what you're getting. You're not getting any chemicals <laughs> or like preservatives over the top of it. And then you can use this as like a toner on a cotton pad and wipe it across your face. Next though. <laughs> Baby, 
Okay, I'm going to stop it there because for the rest of the routine, he just uses a spot treatment and a moisturizer. And I know I was tagging this for the ice cubes and the rice. So an ice cube is going to temporarily make your pores look smaller. smaller. But that's it. Applying it on with an ice cube doesn't really have any benefits other than a nice cooling sensation, maybe 15 minutes with smaller looking pores. It does have no long-term benefit. What I do think this is good for is longevity of the product. Obviously, it's just rice water. You've got no preservatives in here. If you're going to use it on your face, freezing it into little ice cubes like this is potentially a good idea and it's quite clean as well to rub over your face. You're not using cotton pads, so you're not wasting, um, not being wasteful. Ice is potentially irritating for the skin. It can um, burst ca capillaries as well in some cases, but I'm sure you'll be fine. I quite like that. I, I quite like the look of that, to be honest with you. Let's look at this next video. I chose this next video just because I see this guy everywhere. So when I saw him on the TikTok most popular videos, I instantly recognized him and I had to take a look at it. Ayo, expensive Korean skincare check. I want it. I so first of all, Edward, Zoe, we know that's a filter. Come on now. You cannot talk about skincare being good or effective and use a filter that's that obvious. Don't do it. It's wrong. Even his hands are filtered. <laughs> it's one of those bad blurring filters where it skips some areas so you still still see all the pores on the face in certain areas and they look 10 times worse because the rest of the skin's just blur. Yeah, filtered hand. He has got one of the most aesthetically pleasing profiles I see across all platforms. Um, his content is actually just really nice to look at. You can tell he puts a lot of effort and work into his stuff so Definitely follow him if you're not already. So Sarwasu, I think it's pronounced Sar Sar Sarwasu. <laughs> is a very, not very old skincare brand, but I think it originates from like the 60s. That's not that old. Sorry if you were born in the 60s. It's not an outdated brand either. It's just got a lot of history behind it. Now this brand, they um, take a lot of inspiration from traditional Korean medicine, like herbal medicine. It's one of those brands that has a lot of fancy extracts in a lot of their skincare. Extracts from plants you've never heard of, which makes them quite fragrant. Formulated with some basic but good ingredients, but nothing you wouldn't see in a drugstore moisturizer. I do own a few of their products. I actually really like their sunscreen. I bought a mini sample size, which I didn't know was a sample size because it looked bigger on the internet and the price was the price of a normal sunscreen. It's actually an interesting brand. So as of filming this video, he hasn't done a part two by the looks of it, which is fine but I'm gonna answer his question for you. Are, are these expensive products worth it? Maybe, maybe not. The ingredients, as I mentioned, are fine. Again, a lot of potentially useless extracts. However, if you can justify and afford to buy these products and you wanna feel a little bit bougie, give them a go, let me know what you think. If you can't justify spending that money on these products, you are not missing out on anything. Remember, high price doesn't always equal high performance. That's actually all I'm going to do today. So let me know if you enjoy this concept. I want to kind of learn a bit more. Like this is helping me learn how to use TikTok. You know, tag me and stuff. If you see anything that you think is like, oh, that's interesting, good or bad, tag me over on TikTok, Instagram. That's it. But that's it from me now, guys. I will see you next time.